Here is a really nice picture of a lung, as you can see. Here is the peripheral pleural surface. And here is the more central, perhaps close to the hilum surface. Notice that more towards the periphery, we have a irregular, poorly defined, non-homogeneous, perhaps hemorrhagic or perhaps fibrotic or necrotic tumor that is slightly towards the periphery. Here is a microscopic view of the exact same thing. Notice that the uh, pleural surface may even be involved here and you could see the irregular interface of this uh, sub object with the more centrally located lung. Notice that there are areas in which uh, towards a periphery you have scattered lymphocytic uh, infiltrates. Also notice that more centrally there appears to be more fibrous tissue. Also notice that perhaps no matter where you look at this lung, you are going to see that it consists of these little nests of cells like here, like here, like here, 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 uh, here, here, here. And if you look at these of cells, which have a pretty dense uh, inflammatory cell reaction around them, as well as fibrous tissue, like you see here, they generally consist of glands. You could appreciate that right away. You can appreciate the fact that some of the glands are very poorly formed. You could appreciate the fact that some of the glands look better in terms of having a central lumal uh, differentiation. You could appreciate the fact that around these infiltrating nests, uh, there are a lot of inflammatory cell uh, infiltrates. And as long as we can go one more higher power, even though you already know this is a malignant process from its irregular haphazard growth pattern and its a poor delineation into the surrounding lung structures, you could see also from a cytologic point of the view that the cells comprising these glands are big, dark, lumpy, irregular, and in this case have very, very prominent nucleoli. In fact, I would like to think that the nucleoli of many of these tumor cells appears to be about the same size as the full nuclei of the lymphocytes. Here's a little tumor cluster here, same thing. Here's a little tumor cluster here, same thing. If this was the only thing that you saw, you might have a very hard thing of saying it was a gland. But once you see these little uh, abortive tumor nests in which they are abortively trying to form a lumen, and some of them do, you know this is an adenocarcinoma. There's basically uh, two kinds of lung cancers. There's uh, small cell and there's non-small cell. And the non-small cells are either squamous or adenos. And then there's a third uh, kind of non-small cell called a large cell, which could very easily uh, relate or pertain to some of the squamous and adenos, but it doesn't appear to keratinize, and it doesn't really appear to make glands very well, so they call it large cell. Uh, the adenocarcinomas seem to be more peripherally located in the lung, like this one was, and the squamous cells, the other type of non cell, seem to be located more cell. Why? Well, think about it. What kinds of structure in the lungs might undergo squamous metaplasia before they could possibly undergo squamous cell carcinoma? Large bronchi, right? Major bronchi, main stem bronchi, these are more centrally located in the lung. Whereas adenocarcinomas do not uh, usually occur from a previous squamous metaplasia because they are not squamous structures. So they tend to occur more peripherally. Um, this, in all honesty, could not be differentiated from a metastatic adenocarcinoma. 
especially if there were multiple lesions like this throughout the lung. But if there was only one and it was very peripheral, you would uh, give more possibility in your theory that it was a primary rather than a metastatic lesion. And thank you very much.